In this there video, we're going to make some copper metal. Woohoo! Using aluminum and copper sulfate. Some information here copper sulfate was first discovered in 1770 by a Swedish chemist, Wilhelm Scheele. Aluminum was discovered in 1825 by a Danish physicist, Hans Christians Ørsted. Talking about aluminum here, when it's exposed to air, aluminum immediately forms an oxidation layer with the chemical formula Al2O3. It's approximately four nanometers thick. It's very thin, but it happens very quickly. Without this layer, aluminum it would be extremely reactive. Aluminum is so reactive, which is why this oxide layer forms immediately. And without that layer, aluminum would react with water without this layer, creating hydrogen gas without using any electricity. The reaction we're looking at today is swapping aluminum ions with copper ions. So let's look at the actual reaction. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is a balanced equation. We have two aluminum plus three copper sulfates yields aluminum 2SO4-3, which is aluminum sulfate, plus 3Cu. And this is copper metal. And in this reaction here, the aluminum is giving the copper three electrons, which is why it comes out as a metal. So the aluminum is being oxidized because it's losing electrons. The copper is being reduced because it's gaining electrons. But in all reality, the copper sulfate that we're using is actually CuSO4 times 5H2O. It's copper sulfate pentahydrate. And this becomes important if you're ever trying to figure out the molecular mass of this product here. If you don't add those waters in there, you will not end up with a right result if you're working with equations. In this experiment, I'll go over this more here in the methods, we'll be putting aluminum foil into a solution of copper sulfate pentahydrate plus additional distilled water. So we'll have a solution, it's going to look a little bit blue, and we're going to just drop our aluminum foil right in there. So how then do these copper ions get to the aluminum foil? Considering the aluminum foil has this aluminum oxide layer on it, which sometimes thickens in water. Leave this by adding 2 to 3 grams, a very small amount, of sodium chloride. You do that, and it's not understood exactly how this happens but the chlorine ions create openings that allow the copper ions to reach the aluminum and do their electron swap. Through these same openings it also allows some water to get through and it, the water will be touching the pure aluminum which we already know creates hydrogen gas so we will see some hydrogen gas bubbles form because of the water that's sneaking through the openings the chlorine ions are making. For materials we need copper sulfate pentahydrate 50 grams, aluminum foil, four grams and this ratio is the best one it's already been determined i didn't make this up right here or to figure it out mathematically we'll need water 400 milliliters sodium chloride two grams and a beaker of 500 milliliters that we know the amounts of each one that we're using i was talking about the molar mass up here when working with copper sulfite pentahydrate so we're going to determine now what the theoretical yield is knowing how much we have and knowing the exact chemical formula, I'm sorry, chemical equation here that's balanced. Total molecular mass of copper sulfate pentahydrate is 249.5 grams. And you determine that by going through every single one of these. What is the weight of copper, the weight of sulfur, the weight of oxygen times four. Then you have 10 hydrogens, those, the weights of those, which turns out to be 10 because hydrogen has atomic weight of one and then one oxygen. And when you add up all those weights, which you get from a periodic table, you end up with 249.5 grams. That's where that number comes from. This number would also be incorrect if you didn't use the waters that are attached to the copper sulfate. We also know that this is the weight if we had one mole of copper sulfate pentahydrate. So we multiply the amount we are using, which is the 50 grams we already determined up here, times one mole over 249.5 grams, and you want this so that the grams cancel out. That's how you know this is not flipped the other way, because you have grams here, 50 grams, 245 grams, so these cancel out right here, and then you move on to the next step here. Step involves putting the amount in the number of moles of the copper product over where it's coming from, the copper sulfate. So if we go back to the balance equation, we can see we got three copper metals coming, or yeah, coming from three copper sulfates. So that's three moles of copper metal over the three moles of copper sulfate it came from. Now, if these numbers happen to be five and six, then you'd have five and six. But these just happen to be three and three, so they cancel out. This turns out to be one, of course. And then you multiply after that the weight of the copper all by itself, one mole of copper. That's the uh, product up here that you end up with. And when you do all of that, you end up with 12.7 grams. 
And what I mean by all of that is 50 divided by 249.5 times 1 times 63.5. And that gives you the 12.7 grams, which will be our theoretical yield. Finally, onto our methods. We'll have our beaker here, 500 milliliter beaker with 400 milliliters of distilled water in it. Um, I am going to use a magnetic stirrer, but no heat because this reaction is exothermic. First, we're going to add our copper sulfate, 50 grams. Mix it good until it dissolves. It takes some time because this copper sulfate has five waters attached to each one. So it is a slow process, but it will eventually dissolve. Secondly, we're going to add our aluminum foil in there, which will do absolutely nothing until we add our little pinch of salt, two to three grams here. And at that point, you'll start to see some hydrogen bubbles formed, and you will start to see small bits of copper forming on the aluminum foil. After 20 to 30 minutes, most of this should have reacted, and this will look like a really muddy mess because the copper that's formed are little tiny pieces of copper, and there's a lot of them, so it'll look like brown water probably, to be honest. Uh, next, we're going to filter this uh, solution right here. We'll be filtering um, through the aluminum sulfate, which is formed, which we determined up here, and the copper metal will, of course, stay in the filter paper. We then take that out, and we dry it, and finally, we want to weigh it to compare it to what we hope to get to find out what our percent yield is. But in the end, we'll have tiny bits of copper metal weighing hopefully close to what this is right here. And that's a wrap. Let's go do this and make some copper metal. 50 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate pre-weighed. 4 grams of aluminum foil pre-weighed. I put 400 milliliters of distilled water in this 500 milliliter beaker. I'm going to turn on the stirring and I'm going to keep it pretty slow in general. Somewhere around there, I've got my 50 grams of copper sulfate pentahydrate right here, and I'm going to slowly add this. I'll be back when this is completely dissolved. It looks like it's as dissolved as it will be. I'm not sure why it's not 100% clear solution or see-through but um, I'm going to go ahead and put the aluminum in right now and I'm doing this first rather than adding the salt just to show let's turn this off here oh, nothing's happening you can see that pretty clearly I'm going to zoom in now I'm going to add the salt I am going to commence stirring this again at some point, but just for an example here, I'm going to put salt around this. And you immediately see the hydrogen bubbles that are forming there. So we know the reaction starting up, and I'm going to come back once it's commenced a little bit further. It's only been about five minutes. You can already see the copper forming on the surface of the aluminum foil there. And uh, I'm going to, and it's heating up also. I'm going to start the stirring here and we'll come back in a couple more minutes. Well, the magnetic stir bar seems like it's stuck down there. So I'm going to use a glass rod instead just to get most of this down in here properly. Managed to get the stir bar running now, so it is mixing the solution regularly, even though the aluminum foil on top doesn't seem like it's moving. It's been about 15 minutes, and you can clearly see copper metal collecting on the bottom there. Just a close-up of the process. It's not terribly exothermic, but it's up to almost, there we go, 112 degrees Fahrenheit. There's just a couple flakes left of aluminum in there, and we'll be done. All of the aluminum has dissolved. I'm going to turn off the stir bar here and we're on to the next step, which of course is filtering it to get our copper metal. Before I filter this, you can see there's no more blue color left in there, which is confirmation that all the copper in the copper sulfate was converted to copper metal down there. I'm going to start to filter this here. Obviously it's going to take some time. I'll be back when I'm done. Down to the last little bit here. I can tell you without question, this smells like dirty pennies. Okay, at this point we can certainly use distilled water to rinse out the rest of this. I also am going to, going to clean up the uh, copper first too that's in there with uh, distilled water just to wash out you know, any of the salt or 
other stuff that might still be in there. Okay. All right, we'll let that filter down just a little bit. I'm going to clean it a couple times with the distilled water. My third and final wash. We're finally to the last step of drying this. So I'm going to get this filter paper out of here. All right. Work on getting this spread out like this. Well, that was actually pretty easy now. Let it sit on these paper towels to dry. And then I'm going to put it on top of the uh, light bulb heater I made and finish the drying there. While that copper metal dries, this is almost all aluminum sulfate, but it's not. There is definitely three grams of salt in there, sodium chloride. There might be a small amount of copper sulfate. I would usually boil this down and obtain whatever's left if it was pure, but I'm not going to this time. I removed the copper from the very wet filter paper, put it on a new piece. I'm going to turn on the light bulb here and let this sit until it dries. I transferred the copper to a cleaner filter paper here. And uh, it's been on here for about an hour and a half now. It seems dry, very, very dry. So, yeah, it's, you can see the dust coming off the end of here, copper dust. So I'm now going to turn this off and uh, we'll weigh this and see what we got. I've got this 100 milliliter beaker on this scale, teared to zero. And I'm going to do this right here. Let's see what we got here. And it's a very, very, very small amount stuck on the filter paper here. We have 12.25 grams. We expected 12.7 grams. So if we take 12.25 divided by 12.7, I just figured that out. It's 0.9645. If we multiply that by 100, which really doesn't have to be done, but we'll do it anyways. 96.456% yield. I'm okay with that. I'm really happy with that. And it was fun to make raw copper metal. It looks like it's as it does.